What's going on, Fiesta? I don't know. Faramir get literally one shot into it. The demon of the ancient world. Oh my goodness. I do. Faramir, I'm feel. I'm fe what is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sunrise so, channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay for BFM1 on the patch 1.06 on a beautiful map Forts of Aizen. It's an older replay, like a nostalgia casting between good and evil, Gondor versus Mordor, just like in the films. Look at this design of the castle, it's been a long time since I actually played on this one and sometimes from time to time actually it's pretty nice when we get to cast those older replays when the game was much more active than it is now unfortunately in 2022. And, you know, it is how it is. People are moving on most of the time. I'm still trying <laughs> my best to keep it as active as I potentially can. But obviously, it's at summertime. Right now, more people are outside spending, you know, time outside. Especially after these two corona years we had. I think it's good when people are actually a bit more outside. So we have a double farm opening for the Gondor player. He will also move through the bottom side with the Hobbit and these two soldiers. In the meantime, the Mordor player opening up with an Orc Pit getting those two slaughterhouses under his control for the wood bonus and he's waiting to be attacked and it's a mind game situation normally in this matchup Gondor player will actually attack you it, that's why you need to play a bit more passive with the Mordor faction but uh, you know when you play Gondor you don't have to attack you can also do this which is gonna be unexpected and unexpected stuff not always but most of the time can actually work out Okay, creeping action, no problemo. Uh, PowerPoint wise, you know, you don't need to pick... Oh, but Mordor is adapting very fast, you know? He was actually, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna wait any longer. I will use my Elf, Elf Sauron and creep myself. So we have both the people creeping. And Mordor orcs are gonna be level 3 now. They are gonna be very strong. And what Mordor player can actually do is recruit one of the orc archers and combine them with the level 3 orc. So you have a very early level 3 combo battalion, which can hit like a truck. Gollum was also able to get in safety. Look at this sneaky little hobbit uh, looking <laughs> creature. And Gondor player is building up the stable after double farm and a blacksmith. So when you play against Mordor early game, you don't need to build a blacksmith and a farm. You can also open with double farm to just get the stable a bit, uh, a bit, on the, uh, a bit faster on the field. I can't even talk, sorry for that. Uh, because you don't need to get upgrades very early in this matchup. You can also skip the upgrades entirely and go for Gandalf. Because... Against pikemen from Isengard you can actually fight, but against trolls from Mordor with your Gondor knights you cannot fight. So in most cases you will see people when they play Gondor against Mordor rush Gandalf. That's a very solid strategy. Um, it's a tough matchup the longer the game goes on for the for the Gondor faction, but there are some you know power spikes for the Gondor player. And one of them is obviously Gandalf, and the second one is Eagles. So when you get Eagles you can actually make stuff happen. But other than that, Mordor is going to be kind of tough to deal with because the Nazgûs later on, they will have such an incredible amount of impact on the map control. In the meantime, uh, Mordor is also creeping, so two creeps for Gondor and two creeps for Mordor. Uh, actually, three creeps for Mordor. He creeped also this one. <laughs> Dude, that's unbelievable. People are actually creeping the entire map before any of the Gondor Knights came on the field. Which is actually pretty good for the Mordor faction, because look at the eco from Mordor. He has full base now, and he has on top of that an outpost under his control with a furnace and a Haradrim palace coming up. You can recruit Haradrim, one of them, and put them inside the outpost, so the Gondonites cannot destroy it. He will be able to get a couple of the Vorks, so he's gonna get a level 2 Gondonite battalion, but the eco from Gondor is, you know, by all, all means not looking very good. We hear Gollum screaming. There is a level 3 soldier, two of them actually, and Hobbit is level 3 too, so Peregrine took. If you don't know, the soldiers, or any swordmen really, can deal much more damage to the Citadel than the Gondor Knights. So Citadel buildings from every single faction are much more resistant against the slash damage from the cavalry. Mordor is actually putting pressure with the orcs, but orcs, uh, they are kind of weak. They need like 10 minutes to destroy one of the farms, but they will be able to take it down. That's pretty good for Mordor because he's getting closer and closer for the industry power spike. And he doesn't want to go for the for the Nazgul rush. I think when I would be in the shoes of the Mordor player, then I have such a great start into the game, I would just skip the troll kitsch entirely and try to save up for the for the Nazgul. Imagine 
in what kind of standing you will be if you get a Nazgul in the next following minutes, you know what I'm saying? Then Gondor player is literally screwed, he cannot play the game anymore. He has now three, uh, three Gondor Knights under his control, as this table is level 2. But again, from what we are able to see, the Gondor player is not gonna go for upgrades, because he has not even a blacksmith level 2 yet. He doesn't go for the shields either, so he will definitely try to save up for Gandalf as he has the power points collected. You need two power points after the heal to get your Gandalf the Grey into the Gandalf the White. Um, at this point of the game, there is no chance for Mordor to fight for the map control. He will definitely need some trolls on the field, you know, he will need some Haradrims or in this case the runes, but he was demolishing the Haradrim palace right after the first Haradrim. Um, when I play this match, matchup as Mordor against Gondor, I actually want to participate in the map control fights actively. Like, this is a very boring playstyle from the Mordor faction, in which he's gonna camp it out. He wanna get stronger and stronger and stronger, which means he will have to sacrifice lots of map control for now. I mean, he can fight a bit with the trolls, but the second Gandalf joins the battlefield, he has to peel back. He cannot, you know, send trolls outside without any protection, because they will get one-shotted by the mighty spells of the mighty wizard. At this point of the game you can see he has nearly 3000 collected. He's gonna slowly but surely get the money because he has a lot of map control still. But the Mordor player is also getting decent amount of money from these three furnaces around the outpost. And Gondor has no chance for now to take, to take it down. Again. When you play this way with the Gondor faction against Mordor, you cannot really do much against Gond Mordor's castles or outposts until your Gandalf joins the battlefield. But then, the decision making is gonna be very important. You gotta find a transition ASAP. So what you need to do, what I like to do in my personal experience, I wanna actually build up the marketplace. Because when you get your Gandalf on the field, that's gonna be a decent power spike, but it doesn't mean you will win the game yet. That means this games they normally last a while between Gondor and Mordor and for that reason investment into the marketplace and the upgrades can actually be a very smart move to make. We got a level 2 troll with a hulk now. 2 power points, I mean he is gonna invest them into the Gandalf, there we go. Um, in this patch, you know, in the older patches, when you pick Gandalf the White Power Point before Gandalf joins the battlefield, your Wizard Blast is going to be on cooldown, which is not a big deal at this, you know, in this current situation. But sometimes you want to actually use the Wizard Blast the second he joins the battlefield. In this, in this case, you want to wait until Grey joins the battlefield, and then after he is on the field, you want to pick up the Power Point to be able to use your Wizard Blast immediately. I hope this makes sense for you guys. Lots of information, I know. But those small things are the difference between a good player and a great player. Because watch what's gonna happen now. The second he joins the battlefield, he's gonna be only... He's gonna be white. But as you can see, the Wizard Plus is on cooldown. But if he would wait with the Gandalf to white power point, it wouldn't be on cooldown. Okay, so Gandalf is on his Shadow Fags. And that's gonna be the time for Gondor player to shine. But I think Mordor got actually lots of stuff done. He knows he had, he's expecting the timing of the Gandalf. So he's peeling, which is the smartest move ever. Um, in the castle he's pretty strong with lots of towers around the, around the fortress, industry being used on the slaughterhouses. And with the drummer troll nearby, the trolls are gonna be way more tanky, so they won't get one-shotted by Gandalf anymore. And Gondo needs to take down this outpost. At this point of the game, you wanna, dis you wanna take our outpost at the bottom left side as Gondor, you wanna start building archer range and get rangers. Without them, you cannot win the game, you need Oh, he's also selling them to get even more money, you see? If you don't know, if you sell them when your industry is active on your slaughterhouses, you get actually more money from that. So it's a good move, because at this point of the game, if you send orcs forward, they will not do anything but feed more power points to your opponent, and it's a much better choice to sell them. The outpost is gonna be definitely taken down. You see, Easter Light can be used on top of the Haradrims, so you can one-shot them. And now the outpost has zero protection, and it will be taken down. And Mordor is gonna try to save for Witch King. So Nazgul is going to be a waste of money, because, you know, Gan Gandalf can one-shot him almost with the Easter Light. And if you combine Easter Light from Gandalf and the Warning Arrow from Faramir, uh, not from, <laughs> this, from Faramir, uh, this combination is enough to kill a Nazgul from 100 to 0, instantly. There is no counterplay, but the Witch King is way more resistant. 
in compared to a normal Nazgul, especially against the Warning Arrow from Faramir. Uh, the first rush is gonna happen, but it's not gonna be very effective because the trolls are chasing them down all the time. We gotta keep an eye on Gandalf, he's gonna be the most valuable character and hero for the gunner player. I mean, map control is looking very, very good, but again, macro is even more important in this matchup for the Gunder player than micro because every single minute he's wasting and not being able to deal enough damage to the Mordor player, Mordor is gonna get stronger. And with the Witch King, he has a counter push potential. So, Witch King plus Drummer Troll means 100% more damage and 100% more armor for the trolls. They will become extremely beefy and will hit like a truck, you know? They can two shot Gandalf. So Gandalf won't hurt them anymore when Witch King is around, and Witch King can on top of that also chase and catch your Gondor Knights all the time, and get even more power points to get to the point in which you can eventually, you know, pick up the darkness for even more leadership. All of that is able to stack in this game, and you can make your trolls to small Balrogs. <laughs> they can literally be as destructive and as tanky as a Balrog with this much leadership. They can even be almost immune to damage from rangers, so one ranger would need to shoot a troll like for 2 minutes straight up to actually take him down. And that's why I was saying, you know, you need to get a marketplace on the field, you need to capture the outpost, both of them. And when it comes to build the archer range, I would always recommend to build it inside the castle, in which you have a better protection for it. Because around the outpost, it can be destroyed way easier for the, for the mortar player, you know? You can take it down in a few seconds, and that's why you would need that in your castle. Because in order to be able to recruit rangers from your archer range, you need to have it level 2. Gandalf is, you know, looking around. You want to be careful, though. If you lose ever your Gandalf, you will give a huge cooldown window to your opponent, and he has the, the chance to punish you for it. Gandalf doesn't only cost a lot of money to be revived, but also lots of time has to be invested to get the wizard back on the menu. Look, Pippin is popping off against Oryx. <laughs> enough of this, enough of this. You have double outpost and a well. Double outpost give you the hero bonus, making your heroes cheaper. As you can see, Farami normally costs 120, 1200, but now even less than 1000, uh, you know, in total. And Poromir, who costs normally in this patch 1600, will only cost you 1280. Mordor has zero, <laughs> literally zero slaughterhouses or Lammermere's outside. So Gondor has complete control, and that's the time, you know, you want to invest money. Imagine how much value you will get from the marketplace Grand Harvest with this many farms outside. Can you imagine that, guys? He has full map control, he has full base and double outputs, dude. I'm telling you, he would be easily Elon Musk of the Middle Earth, you know, easily. But uh, back in the day, marketplace was super underrated. It was still very strong. I used to build it every single time, but it was just too underrated. Now in 2022, especially on the patch 2.22, we are able to see it way more often, because it's a really, really good investment for the Gondor faction. Witch King is popping off, Lightning Sword will be missed, oh he, oh he catch him dude, that's pretty nice. Look, it will almost one shot him, almost, but he will be barely able to get away. Now he gotta be careful, because the combination of the Lightning Sword and Easter Light is more than enough to even strike down the Witch King from air to the ground. I mean, that's not true, <laughs> because the Witch King is exploding in the air, he doesn't fall on the, you know, on the ground when he gets slain. But in the patch 2.22, he does. <laughs> he does. We actually changed the death animation from the Nazgul's and the Witch King, so when you kill them now, or when you get your Nazgul killed, he will fall on the ground instead of exploding in the air. What I mean is only level 3, has to be level 5 at bare minimum to get the leadership unlocked for more, you know, armor leadership. But in this matchup, you will need damage leadership. Your armor doesn't help you at all, because if the trolls ever can reach out to you, they will smash you. Regardless if you have 100% more armor or 200% more armor, it doesn't really matter anything. And your hero's gonna get smashed too. That's why you need to fight around your statues for more DPS. It gives you 100% more damage leadership. And or Boromir has to be recruited and got to level 4. Farami and Boromir also in this version are getting on the field by being level 3, so Boromir needs only one more level to actually get damage leadership unlocked. So Witch King was recovering, at this point it's not gonna kill him, but you know, you see Ganav is able to chunk him, and your abilities, they are also scaling with levels, so the more levels Ganav has, the harder they gonna hit the Easter Light and Lightning Sword. Oh nice, he killed the Drummer Troll. Trolls are committing, but they don't have leadership from the Witch King. Witch King is too far away. Now he's deciding to enter the battlefield, 
Uh, and that's what I'm talking about, you see? I mean, he will lose the outpost, right? Faramir is gonna <laughs> look one new one. <laughs> the troll doesn't care, you know what I'm saying? The Dramar troll, you don't want to be attacking with Dramar troll. If Dramar troll is attacking, he won't give leadership. So the smartest thing Gonda can do in this situation is kill the Dramar troll ASAP. But he can't. Okay, okay. The outpost is gonna be definitely taken down, and that means no more rangers anytime soon for the Gonda player. He has a trebuchet or the siege works around this side, but without the protection. Oh, nice snipe from Gan of Dwight. He was taking revenge from what happened in the films, you know, the cutscene, you know, the deleted scene, extended edition from the Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, in which you have seen Gandalf and Witch King fighting, but in reality, let's be honest, uh, Witch King wouldn't stand a chance against Gandalf. Or, or what do you think, guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think, in a real fight in the Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings, if Witch King would fight against Gandalf, Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White, doesn't really matter, would Witch King stand a chance against Gandalf? I don't think so, because at the end of the day, Gandalf is the same class like Sauron. You know, they are Myers, you know? They are like pretty much angels, immortals. They have like crazy powers. And Witch King is only a servant of a Maya. So, I don't think Witch King would stand a chance if Gandalf would actually go all out, you know? Actually, Mordor lost everything around this side. That's pretty bad. But Gondor needs some recovery. So, tre Trebuchet are moving on. Trebuchet are also able to deal great amount of damage to them. Uh, to the trolls, but they need some sort of protection. You want to have some archers to protect them against your against the enemy Nazgul or Witch King or trolls, you know? Because without protection, one Nazgul can just one-shot them. Mordor's eco is not looking that good. Luckily, you can revive your Witch King for free. It just, you know, takes a long time to be get, to get them back on the menu, but it's okay. Industry is going to be available. Uh, you want to always demolish those buildings by yourself. When it comes to, you know, your statue, your well, these buildings are giving just too many experience points and power points to your opponent. That's why you need to make sure to demolish them by yourself. Don't let your opponent take them for free. Witch King halfway back up. Gandalf is still alive. And at this point of the game, uh, Gondor has to play a bit more aggressively. Like... You wanna you wanna threaten the base, the castle, you know? When you know the Witch King is down, that's the time when you wanna make stuff happen. At this point, we have like clear information for the Gunner player. He knows Witch King is dead. He knows darkness is on cooldown. That means two of the important leaderships for the Mordor are not active as we are talking. Oh, but you cannot face tank this still, you know? They have still drama troll, lots of trolls. Witch King about a minute away from getting back on the menu. You see, they don't get one shot anymore when Dramar Troll is nearby. But unfortunately, this troll is, you know, fighting with the tree. And when you have the tree in your hands, you cannot eat an orc and regenerate. That's not possible. Faramir is back on the menu, boys. He never, ever recruited Boromir. Like, look at the money from Gondor. And that's the thing you need to understand about this game. The money you have collected in your bank, unless you are saving up for something, which the Gondor player doesn't, is pointless. Like, you wanna keep investing money. When you have this much money, you, there is no reason to not build a second stable. There is no reason to not build a second archer range. There is no reason to not build a storm worker. There is no reason to not build the marketplace. You have so much money in the bank. You have such a great map control. You have such an inc incredible amount of production speed you know, from the resources. So the money you cannot use is not worth it. It's not, it's worthless. That's what I'm trying to say. If two archers, Farami and Ganov, are they going to be enough to stop the Witch King? I don't know. But Ganov has to be careful. Very smart move. Oh, but they are so damaged. You see the, tro the, the catapults, the trebuchet are hitting very hard. Smart move. Tra taking them down with the Gunner Knights as they were chasing down Gandalf. Sloppy micro here from the Moro player. Farami get literally one shot into it. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Dude, Farami is literally trying only to show his quality. Why would you kill him like that? Oh, 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 oh. do you don't want to do this? Kill him, kill him, kill him. Oh, you don't want to do this, Gandalf, you see? That's the problem. When you cast a spell with Gandalf, right? Uh, after the spell is done, you cannot move for like two seconds, which is more than enough time for the trolls to smash you. Trust me, they don't. you don't want to underestimate their damage output. 
They are just too powerful. 150% more damage with the Eye of Sauron. They just want to have you. Who's the monster troll? That's the that's the leader, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, the king of trolls. The outpost is gonna be taken for the second time. Mistake once again to build the archer range around the outpost. Again, it's easy to be taken down versus the archer range inside your castle. Like he needs to now revive Gandalf in Faramir. That's gonna cost him also lots of money and time. And that's the time for Mordor to shine. Now he can capture the outpost and use the momentum, Gandalf being dead, to clean the map from the Gondonites, get power points collected in the bank, get closer to the Balrog summon, and get map control, which you can use to get a second and even a third Nazgul recruited. For even more map control situation. But sloppy from Mordor to lose a gun um, troll like this against one Gondonite, that's not good. It's not, a, it's not the end of the world though. And Gondor is still two power points away from the Eagles special summon. So that's gonna be kinda rough. Eagles can do crazy amount of damage. They can one shot the trolls. And they have so much leadership, it looks like they're healing, right? That's crazy. <laughs> but they are actually not healing. And Faramir, I think that's the third time he's recruiting him or reviving him. And he got zero experience. <laughs> he got zero experience. Then Eto wouldn't be proud at you. Paramia, the captain of Gondor. Um, yeah, I mean, now he's investing lots of money into the towers, which is, again, like, mistakes. A greediness. I, I want to call this greediness because maybe he's expecting to finish off the game way faster, way sooner, but then we have, like, no backup plan. You know what I'm saying? When I play the game myself, uh, after many years of experience, of course, I want to have always, like, a backup plan. What happens if I lose this battle? What happens if I cannot succeed? I want to have like a plan B, you know? And plan B is marketplace, plan B is Stormwalker. From experience, you learn. And against, against Mordor, it's like a coin flip situation because it's about, the question is, can you kill the trolls before they can kill you? Can you burst them down before they can, before you can burst them down? Oh, again, I've been back on the menu, boys. Level seven. And also in this matchup, the War of Power is not that impactful if I'm being honest with you, because it doesn't deal that much damage to the Nazgûls, to the Witch King, and also not to the Trolls. It's more against Cavalry and Infantry, which Mordor doesn't really rely on. So as you can see, there's almost no Infantry for Mordor at all. And again, the same situation like before. So if you want to use Water Power, you can use it. You want to have like five seconds channeling time, and then you cannot move afterwards. So if you cannot knock down the Trolls from your Gandalf, you will die after you cast it, you know? Because you cannot move. Nice dodge from the Witch King, very smart move to dodge the Lightning Sword. And Lightning Sword has a long cooldown, like 4 minutes cooldown. Pippin, Peregrine took almost level 5, uh, 4 power points in the bank. Like a 50-50 situation almost. I mean, the map control is still, still looking better for the, for the, for the Gondor player, but I think Mordor could have done a bit more for the map control, if I'm being honest. Like, he was a bit more sloppy. In, instead of going for the combos, I would highly recommend to get a second Nazgul on the field first. Because combos are so expensive, right? In order to give them fire, oh, you need to invest more than 500 for every single one of the archers or combos. Because he has only 3 furnaces for the cost reduction on the upgrades. So if you don't, want, if you don't have 6, it's very expensive. I mean, the Witch King should just go in, you know, and kill something. Because he needs to know, okay, the... Lightning Sword is on cooldown, I can do whatever you want. But it's not the case. Darkness is available. The game is kind of slowing down at this point. I think both people, both the players are kind of avoiding any hard engagement. Because the one big fight we are building up for can actually de decide the outcome of the game. If Gondor loses the battle, Mordor has the chance to fully commit on the castle. And take. trust me, those towers, they won't stop Mordor at all. They won't deal damage to them. With Darkness, Witch King, Drummer Troll... The trolls, they can tank these towers for ages because he has no stonework upgrade on them, you know? They are not hitting like a truck. And when, when Ganoff is dead, you can just send in the Witch King and one-shot the trebuchet one by one, no problemo. Power point wise, I mean, Mortal is definitely way closer to the Balrog special summon than Gondor is. And also, you know, in the very late game, in which Mordor unlocks the Balrog summon, Balrog is better in this version of the patch. Um, because 
In this version, Balrog is definitely easily able to one-shot a full castle of Gondor. So one Balrog can definitely finish off the entire castle. But EOD, Army of the Dead in this matchup, is not very strong. Because you cannot target uh, the Nazgul or the Witch King. They can just keep flying and you will never be able to reach to them. You know what I'm saying? So Balrog is definitely more impact impactful in this specific matchup than the Army of the Dead is. Mordor is moving to the bottom side. I mean, he has so many trolls on the field now. Four trolls and two drummer troll here. If we have like five trolls and one drummer troll here. <laughs> Look, they are stepping on Peregrine Tuk. He's, you know, disguised. Camouflage. Pew, pew, pew. Look, that's a ranged battalion, by the way, boys. With 100% more damage. And look how much time he needs to kill one of the trolls only. Beautiful trample, though. Very, very well done. Um, we're gonna keep an eye on the, on the power points from Gondor. That's very important. Oh, now, he, he cast it. He has the chance to take it down, but Witch King is paying attention. The player is... Oh, but he's not paying attention now. Now he's gonna die, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna die. Gandalf is almost level 8. That's very really good. I mean, it, even though War of Power doesn't really do much in this matchup, but it's still nice if you can use it against combos. And also levels mean, again, more DPS and more damage from your powers. In very, very great fight, actually, for the Gondor player. Big uh, mistake from Mordor. He lost literally everything and gave a huge potential of a great comeback to the Mordor player RPO. Um, those mistakes, you want to avoid them. Especially at this, at this point of the game, it's a late game situation in which one counter push can end everything. Unlike the furnaces, the slaughterhouses are quite squishy buildings, so the Gondor Knights, with all these upgrades and Gandalf leadership, can take them in a few seconds. But here's a Nazgul. He went for another Nazgul. Somewhere it has to be flying a Nazgul around. Uh, the trolls are coming too with the darkness and drama troll leadership. It's a misty. Oh my goodness! You look. You don't want to get clumped in a in a tiny area like this because with the, with the tree in their hands, the trolls are able to deal splash damage. So they are able to hit multiple targets at the same time. And if you kind of get into a small choke point, um, you will kind of do a favor to your, for your opponent. You know, you don't you don't do this. Like I think the best thing you do you can do is you should be moving immediately to oh he lost another Nazgul. The Gondor player should be immediate, immediately moving to the top side, cleaning this area completely, making sure to cut the resource and come from Mordor as much as you potentially can, and leave the castle for the last potential attack. And then you can in the meantime move move your you know archers forward with Faramir and Boromir. Boromir can be very important in this matchup too, because even when you are only level 3 with Boromir, Boromir can knock down trolls on the ground. So when trolls are nearby, you can use Boromir micro around a bit by selecting and attacking the trolls one by one, and you can disable them. It doesn't matter if they are very strong, if they are very tanky, but it doesn't matter when they cannot move, you know, when they cannot stand up and fight. <laughs> doesn't matter. Boromir is super underrated, one of my most favorite heroes definitely in the patch 2.22. Especially with the new ability the for Gondor is so powerful, you know, you don't want to miss him. Trust me on that one. We have catapults now. He's waiting for the Witch King to be back on the menu. But if the Gondor player can destroy the Citadel, that's going to buy so much time for the, for the Gondor player. 14 power points in the bank. Only 6 power points away from getting the Balrog, the demon of the ancient world. And again, the Balrog has definitely the potential to end this castle once and for all. And also in this version, can you imagine that, guys? We are in a very long game right now, but those blacksmiths are still not level 3. <laughs> can you imagine this? I mean, so many bugs, so many uh, random, I don't know, errors, I think, got fixed in the patch 2.22. Can, can you imagine that? Like, this blacksmith is now on the field, this one, for example, since like, what, 15 minutes, and this is still level 2. That's unbelievable. Hobbit, <laughs> level 4, Terry Green took, 4 Trebuchet, are they gonna move out forward? I mean, that's an army of Warfare of Mordor, you know what I'm saying? Look at this army, boys, holy quack moly. Like, good luck breaking through the defense of this one, without eagles. The Witch King is back, in the meantime, Gondor will be able to take care of this one. Map control is looking purple to me. There is only one single lumber mill, but look at this. <laughs> there are no, you know, trees around the lumber mill anymore, and they gotta really walk a long distance to capture or, you know, loot resources from the trees. And that's a really big problem for the evil factions in really, really long games. You understand? Like 
imagine once the trees are gone, what is the next location they gotta move on? Eventually the middle of the map. And then it would be so funny to see the workers from this lumber mill moving all the way to this location and back, you know? Imagine you are living in New York City, but you gotta work in, I don't know, Florida, for example. And you you need to walk, you know, every day. <laughs> that would be kind of disaster. I feel for the for the Lamborghini workers. And the Gondor player doesn't feel for them. Because he's going to kill them now. Oh, nice chunk. Nice chunk. Nice chunk. It's a great amount of damage to the Witch King. So Witch King, gotta watch out. Um, he gets another Nazgul on the field. Who is now fighting for the map control. And... The Nazgul is invisible, we don't see him. <laughs> Maybe my assets are actually messed up, I don't know. I've also not seen the Easter Light animation coming through to attack this Witch King. I was like, what is going on? But, you know, errors in the middle of the night. By the way, it's like 3 a.m. In, in the middle of the night here in Germany. But I'm doing this video for you guys. Um, but I couldn't sleep, you know. And my son is not letting me sleep anyway. So here I am, boys. Okay, so Mordor play is waiting for the perfect opportunity. Um, in the castle, he's pretty strong. Because even if the Gunner player summons the Eagles, every single building is gonna shoot down the Eagles. With the combos together, the Eagles won't get a chance to get attack off. They will die before they can attack anything. They are very vulnerable against damage from arrows and fire arrows. But he doesn't even have fire arrows. Mordor is kinda poor. He's waiting for the, for the Nazgul's return. He will have 10 to... Okay. The invisible Nazgul has been slain. Apparently, he's only invisible for us, not for the Gondor player. <laughs> Luckily for Gondor. Like a ghost Nazgul. Darkness, full commitment, boys. Elven allies, special summon, eagles coming. Eagles are coming, so the, the thing is, you gotta... Don't attack the combos. You don't wanna do this. You wanna attack the... Faramir has been slain, by the way. The eagles need to attack the trolls. What's going on, Fiesta? I don't know what is happening in this situation. I don't know where Gandalf is. There is Gandalf. He was in Afghanistan or something. Gandalf, what are you doing down there? Like, Mordor is smashing everything. The eagles, they couldn't get anything done. Look at the DPS from the one of the arrows from the combos. Oh, but a little bit too overcommitment. Does he have Easter lights in the bank? Let me check, let me check, let me check, let me check, let me check. No, he's waiting for it. He's trying to be around, but now he can use it. Ah, the Witch King is dead for the third time. Gandalf the Witch King Slayer, but Mordor doesn't want to hold, he doesn't want to stop, he doesn't want to give a rest, he wants to commit now fully, but it's a, it might be a mistake, because drama trolls are far far away from this location, and the trolls are actually getting killed quite fast, oh the Nazgul has been slain, the invisible Nazgul once again, the Nazgul, we can't even see them dude, it's unbelievable. Uh, but the outpost will be definitely taken down. And on top of that, look at this. Look, we have 21 power point, And that's one more than you need to unlock the demon of the ancient world. To end this game once and for all. Let, can he do it? Because, again, it's very important to... You need to micro. You cannot, you know, be blindfolded and destroy the castle automatically. That's not possible. You know, you can't. You need to macro with your Balrog to do that. But it's definitely not hard. It's really not hard. And to be fair, Gondor Castle is even easier to be destroyed than a Rohan Castle is. He lost all the Nazgûs, the two invisible one and the Witch King. But he has still a very strong force. Look at these trolls, boys. The attack trolls and one BB troll. They are damaged, but the level 2 or higher trolls can heal up over time. Rama Troll has been slain by Gandalf. Gandalf is level 8. He needs lots of experience from level 7 to level 10. You know, that's like, you need like so much more experience than any other hero to get him to level 10. Which kind of makes sense because he kills so much stuff throughout the entire game, you know? He's very mobile. Nobody can catch him besides Nazgûs or Witch Kings or anything that can fly, really. But anything else cannot reach him. And he can, you know, he has the hit and run potential. He can always come, use a spell and go away, wait for the recharge time. And do it over and over again throughout the entire game. Yeah, Gondor is poor. <laughs> Who would have thought that? And imagine if... He would invest the money earlier, like 15 minutes earlier, into the marketplace. Imagine how rich he would be by getting 40 percent more money from the farms outside. Can you imagine that? 40 percent. It means every third farm is gonna act like a number four farm, you know. And with this many farms outside, totally quack moldy. Like at this point, he's trying to get to the power, you know, power point or power spike for the Bal for the AOD. But in the meantime, we hear Balrog. The demon of the ancient world. I want to see the micro actually. Uh, also, I want to see the damage, but I think the Gonna play is retreating. He messed up the ignite, 
So it's not a good start. I think you don't want to mess this up though. Now the breath is very important. A little bit too close in my opinion. Yeah, a little bit too close. Because you can normally destroy five buildings at the same time. Like you can destroy these five. But I think it's still doable. Fly, okay. It auto attack this fast. You don't want to waste time. Uh, okay, he messed up. He he won't be able to finish this off anymore. There is there is no way. There is no way. He messed up from the beginning, uh, but he messed up by not destroying this one as well. Because even now, if he would use breath fire to kill these three remaining buildings, uh, this building is gonna save the castle of Gondor, and he won't even get the chance to use it for the second time. So it's like a big mess up. And you know what? When you play Gondor and you found you find yourself in a situation like this Gondor player right now. That's like an alarm signal in your head. Like ring, 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 ring. I have to play aggressively. I have to commit now. Because if I don't do anything, the model player can just wait it off until the Balrog can be summoned for a second time. In this version of the patch, the Balrog and EOD cooldowns are way lower than in the patch 2.22. So you can easily use it twice in like five minutes, you know? We increase the cooldowns of the ultimate summons to make the game more army fighting instead of the you know balrog one-shotting everything oh my goodness whatever comes through your gate you are soldiers of gondor hold your ground <laughs> they don't die Eagle's gonna be summoned for the second time gandalf is looking for opportunity he looks for a chance to show his quality boom chakalaka but they don't die does he have no land he didn't have land he doesn't want to go for land because it will slow him down in even farther and the aod will be even <laughs> Dude, Faramir. I, I am speechless. I do it, Faramir. I'm feel, I'm feel no! Be careful what you step on, son. Be careful what you step on, son. If you get close to the trolls, these hulks, if even the right color, the green color, they will smash you. And look at the money from Gondor. He lost the majority of the castle. He lost map control to the Nazgûls. Uh, the Nazgul, the invisible Nazgul, is taking care of the strangers, as we are to, <laughs> able to, to not see. We, we just see a random, like, it's the force, you know what I'm saying? May the force be with you, Mordor. <laughs> like, invisible random force is taking care of the rangers. I mean, he's close to the to the EOD, but what can EOD do? That's what I'm trying to say all the time, by the way. You know, you have now EOD, that's great. Yeah, you can kill the trolls, you can kill the combos, but... What about the Nazgûls? What about the Witch King? How are you planning to kill them? You cannot kill them. If the AOD cannot target them. So unless the player you are playing against is not very smart and he's trying to kill your AOD with your with your with his Nazgûls and Witch King, the AOD can never touch them. He's gonna use it here to kill three trolls, but the Moro player is gonna say, you know what? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And yeah. He doesn't even have a full base yet. Every building is level 1 only. And you know how long it takes to get those buildings to level 3. The blacksmith from the beginning of the game is still level 2 after like 25 minutes in. It's incredible about, it's incredible about how much time a blacksmith needs to level 3. The invisible Nazgul, the AOT, won't be able to deal any damage to this location. Troll Cage is rebuilding up. Mortar is also triple out, triple furnaces. And the Balrog is going to be available very soon. Mordor is now rich. And it will even be greater later on with the Scavenger. You get money for every single unit you kill. And you have also Devastation. To turn the trees into more resources. You know, Industry, Devastation and a Scavenger. In a long game, in an extended game, uh, money is not a problem for the evil factions. Good factions have the advantage of additional summons, so they can call reinforcements like Alvin allies, you know, Rohirrim allies, eagles, AOD, while the evil factions can only summon one big creature, the Badrock, but other than the additional summons the good factions have, the evil factions have lots of tools to get more leadership or more money in compared to the good factions. So, again, it's a... Uh, I don't know if it's balanced or not. It's just different. To make it like in the films, you know? It's a Lord of the Rings game based game. And the good factions were helping out each other. And just to make it look like in the films, uh, that's not as. Uh, again, not the best Balrog Breathfire. 
the, the way you want to do that is you want to summon him right here on the spot. And you want to fly in. When you are flying in, you want to use Ignite while you are in the air. So when you land, you don't need to waste your animation time in additional time for the Balrog. Then you want to step two steps and then breath fire into this direction. Look, you see this thing on the ground? Like here. Then you can kill all these five buildings, which makes it 100% easier to destroy. But in this case, the Witch King is helping out. The outpost has been taken down. Gondor is trying to capture this one, but I think he won't make it. And that might be the last move. With the last breath fire. Oh, the Witch King just before he dies. And the Gondor player has been defeated. GG well played. <laughs> Yes, the game would. Yes, the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I want to. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a track, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.